All right, I'm going to go ahead and just record it. Um, and you, if you can record a version of it as well, Tom, so that we have it, that would be great. Um, and okay. you can go ahead and get started. And okay. I'll give you host in a second. Okay, let me let me do the, the record first. Oh, <laughs> and I need to get host back here. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just make sure I'm logged into my. Oh, you know what? Here you go. Manage switch account. Let me here. I think I got it. Hold on. This is what you're trying to do when you're trying to rush things around. All right. No, no worries. Good morning, everyone. All right, and. Good morning. And. All right. All right. I am recording and I'm just going to go ahead and make you a host. Make the host, Tom, and go ahead and you can get started. Okay. Let me. I'm the host. Thank you. Record on this computer. So we got that going. Let me start sharing screen with three. We're going to go one more minute here and then we'll. Uh, rock and roll. So if you're listening on the recording, you can fast forward a minute here. Share screen. Share. Okay. And Amy, you're almost ready, right? Yes, almost ready. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. We're, we're in business. So when it flips to 11.04 on my, uh, my computer here, we're gonna roll. And I see some folks, let's see who's out there. Ben, Alicia, Brett, thanks for joining, Andrew. Okay, why don't we get rolling here? So folks, thanks for uh, joining. Today's Hyperledger Supply Chain Special Interest Group session on uh, keeping pace with blockchain and ocean transportation. So uh, it's about a month or so ago, I was reading Supply Chain Management Review and I always look for blockchain articles when I'm uh, reading the, the magazine. And there was a great article in there that Amy is one of the co-authors uh, of the article. There were three, three folks and uh, Amy has agreed to come and share uh, some of the insights that she and her uh, co-authors have around basically improving blockchain usage in ocean transportation. And lots of us know about TradeLens out there. And what I thought was interesting is how they've taken what TradeLens is doing and they're applying some more intellectual capital or more thought to it in order to how, how to improve it. So I liked I like the maturity and I thought it would be good for our group to hear a little bit different uh, view of how to enhance blockchain situate or blockchain applications out there in the real world. So um, this is all being recorded. You see, we've got a, got a new, new little splash screen here. And then also let's, uh, we got to there we go. Okay. And I'm just going to put up the antitrust policy here that this is, uh, as part of Hyperledger and the Linux Foundation that these are open meetings and all the things that are said here are open. So don't say anything proprietary, et cetera, et cetera, uh, with that. So um, a couple of things here, I'm gonna mention Danielle Barbosa who is on VP Alliances for Hyperledger. Uh, she's gonna help us kind of try to pump this up and we're not able to do it today, but in the future, what we're gonna try to do is uh, take these sessions and also put them up on YouTube so that it makes it a little bit easier to share them, as well as we'll get some statistics a little bit on uh, how the recordings are being used out there. So uh, thank you, Daniela, for that. So with this, let me stop sharing, and I'm going to allow now Amy to grab the screen here and share with us her presentation. As Amy and I talked before in, questions are okay. Can you grab it, Amy? The present. The, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, Please. Yeah. Yeah. You should. Be, oh, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay. Let me do that. Okay. 
Um, Amy has said that she's good with questions along the way here. So free free to ask them either in the chat and I'll bring them up or you know just, just jump on in, unmute your mic and uh, jump on in here. So with that, Amy, it's all yours. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Tom. And uh, thank you, Tom, for this great opportunity to share some of our research ideas. And I also like uh, want to thank everyone for being here, you know, uh, for this discussion. Um, I want this make this uh, more like a discussion uh, opportunity to, um, you know, share ideas with you guys. So, uh, so feel free to uh, stop me if you have a question. So we can always. I, I may not have answer, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but we always we can always uh, have a discussion. Okay? Um, so so the topic I want to talk about is uh, keeping pace uh, with blockchain in ocean transportation, and this is the article we recently uh, published at uh, Supply Chain Management Review. Okay? So why we uh, started this research, right? Um, the it's because of ocean transportation, it's going through a very, very difficult time right now. Um, even before the pandemic, right, ocean transportation has like this fierce competitions in there. And it's uh, the overcapacity issue is uh, very um, severe there. And um, we see bigger and bigger vessels uh, going to uh, adopt it in ocean transportation and uh, and people just focus too much on price and uh, because of this global transportation global uh, trade this is kind of like unbalanced so we see a lot of uh, full containers going okay in one direction okay across pacific ocean from china to us or you know and, but we see like a lot of empty um, containers going back. Okay? So this routes are uh, um, unstructured, uh, uh, unbalanced. Okay? And also the, because of fuel cost change and all that. And uh, so, so ocean transportation the service is, is not that good. And not to mention um, like, uh, I think uh, the top seven uh, big um, Carriers, they probably control like 70, 60 to 70, or even higher of the overall market. Okay. Um, so it's an industry with a very high threshold to join because you need to have big vessels. And also, but it's also an industry with uh, not so many players because we have a limited number of uh, uh, big. Um, on carriers in ocean transportation. Um, traditionally, the people use a lot of paper document and uh, it costs a lot of time. And also it's uh, um, very costly in communication and all that. Uh, so absolutely, this is the industry need uh, innovation and it's going through changes. Um, and Probably some of you are aware of what's happened recently with the Panama Canal accident. <laughs> and yeah, so something happened, you know, it just can uh, severely interrupt the you know, global uh, or ocean transportation industry. So we will actually look at- Maybe there's a quick question there um, from uh, Ben. When you're talking, is this containers, bulk, or all of the above? And I'll let Ben clarify that if it needs clarifying. Uh, I, what I mean is the container ship, a lot of the vessels with the container, the container ship vessels. Okay. The, the so, you're think, so you're thinking more from a container ship perspective as opposed yeah, to a bulk yeah, where I'm shipping yeah, oil yeah. or I'm shipping stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More okay. container ship. Yeah. Okay, got it. And I, I have a question also, when you mentioned about uh, a number of the uh, containers going back empty to China, have you ever seen any stats on that? Uh, I know there were a lot of stranded containers with all the disruptions due to COVID, um, but I'm wondering, you know, 
How many of those containers going back to China are empty? Is it 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent? This, this I have to really dig in to f find out the number. Okay, fair, fair enough. That, yeah, that yeah. is just more of an yeah. interesting data point as opposed to... Yeah, and it also depends on the seasons. Right, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Okay, good. Thank you. We'll let you continue mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So, um, so in ocean transportation, people has been constantly searching for like a new technology and all that uh, innovations. So in 2016, um, launched by Maersk and IBM, um, the uh, trade lens is launched by Maersk and IBM. And so far, uh, it's the largest example of blockchain in global transportation. So in this research, we dig in a little bit about what's happening with the trade lens. And also, we wanted to, uh, we also proposed some strategy to further, you know, in our uh, ideas, opinions, to further uh, improve the adoption of blockchain in ocean transportation. Okay. We call it a PACE, P A C E, uh, the four letters, a strategy we're going to talk about later on. Uh, so what we have is trade learns, in our opinion, <laughs> has been very successful. Uh, ever since it's launched, uh, just so many shippers and carriers and 3PL, 4PLs, poles and terminals, you know, even government agents have joined the, this blockchain. Now there are more than 100 uh, members, or we call it actors, in this blockchain, and it's still expanding. And uh, all this uh, big part of the major like carriers already in this uh, blockchain, uh, and it is a permissioned blockchain. So this is uh, in um, <laughs> in our opinion is a very successful story of uh, uh, adopting blockchain technology in um, industry in applications. Okay. So the strategy we propose, uh, we call it a PACE, basically is a permission, authorization, um, consolidation, and expansion. So that's P-A-C-E. <laughs> yeah, so what are we looking at is how we should uh, in, like adopt uh, uh, like the blockchain technology in ocean transportation, um, we propose like it should be started, at least started with a permissioned okay, blockchain instead of it is, uh, um, this open source one. Um, the reason is um, ocean transportation, um, we need a lot of, you know, with a document, okay? We need a lot of security and, and we also need to have the trust built up in this blockchain. And we know technology, maybe blockchain technology, tend, tend to be okay, uh, secure, okay, well, information sharing. But still, well, for people to join it, uh, we have to have the trust. Okay. And uh, as permissioned uh, uh, blockchain, you know, while well, someone in order to join it needs to get uh, approved okay, beforehand. So make other members feel Okay, secure. Okay. And also we also wanted to kind of limit or control what type of information is shared in this uh, um, okay, distributed ledger. Okay. How much to share? We want more control and limited access to the operational data. Okay. Uh, with that, I think a permissioned blockchain makes sense. And that's what uh, Traders is doing so far. Um, so that's the thing we wanted to start it with permissioned blockchain. And then we wanted to expand. Okay. Uh, and another thing is we proposed the authorization idea. Basically, we, when we start with a permissioned blockchain, we don't want to give power, equal power to all the members. So we wanted to gradually build up our credit in this blockchain. And uh, so we have actors, certifiers, and registrars. Like in the uh, trade lens uh, situation, the registrars is IBM, because IBM has the technology. Okay? 
and uh, certifiers will be a day of few uh, bigger players, carriers um, that can check the background or you know, somehow know the information okay, to uh, approve actors. Okay? And we also wanted to build something we call the parliament. Okay? Right now, Chitlerns has an advisory board. Okay? Yeah. But we wanted to involve more actors and uh, certifiers, you know, have some kind of process that make other smaller players are able to join in making decisions in this blockchain, like in making decisions about how much information to share, how to control this blockchain, how to connect with other blockchains, right? So we wanted to gradually, you know, okay, uh, build up okay, this structure inside the blockchain. Okay? That's the idea we call the authorization. And another idea we want to uh, promote is consolidation. So we, as we mentioned at the beginning, ocean transportation, the competition is very fierce. And we have big players, carriers. Like if I'm a Maersk, I have like this huge vessel with like 20,000 containers each time for the trip. I have no time to or no energy okay, to communicate with some small shipper who only want a half a container. Okay. So, so is consolidation mean not, not so much taking the seven big ocean going uh, companies out there and consolidating them down, you're saying bringing them together better. I'm thinking bringing the shippers together, like those companies who are using this shipping service, right? I want to ship something like one container, two container. Like yeah. Musk is not going to deal with me. Their ship is so huge. Okay? So right now, like you have to deal with three PL, yeah. or even four PL, and you and you have to wait because you're small. Okay, and you don't get a good price either. Okay, but if as shippers, like I'm a small shipper, but as a shipper, I can can we can consolidate. Like we have like. Okay. Got 100 it. shippers together, we put in a bigger like a request. Okay, we want 100 containers. Okay, and uh, we got a better deal from Musk. We have the negotiation power. So in effect, in effect, you, this is shipper focused, and that you would hit, you'd be able to, instead of have, using a 3PL or 4PL to cre create that discounting or power now having it more broad broadly based yeah yeah it okay. can do this way super side but also it can also be from the carrier side so for example i'm a carrier i'm Maersk, okay i'm doing this trans-pacific uh shipping scheduled okay but i only have half of my ship full okay and then i have another company cmd has another half of the ship full okay we don't have the enough demand this time Okay. okay, what we do is we can consolidate and make it one ship. Okay, one big vessel serve for customers of two ca carriers. But like in airplane, we see when we see like uh, when we fly Delta, it actually operated by American Airlines. Okay, that can happen in ocean transportation if we consolidate for the carriers too. So the carriers can use their resource more efficient as well okay or like a or a plane flight will get canceled because there's not enough player not enough no. uh, passengers on an american flight and they're going to put you on a delta flight and they'll just yeah it them. may not cancel we just delta and american you know we have the cooperation we have two numbers okay D yeah flight number and also a flight number but it's okay. a work play okay Got it. that can happen for carriers too because if you have a half like a full vessel trans pacific that's a huge waste yeah yeah but you can consolidate on their side okay and so they you know competitors can collaborate and coordinate 
So this way, you know, for the carriers, this is a big saving for the carriers as well. So we hope this thing can happen with the technology, with the blockchain technology. And it needs the support for, from a smart contract to um, make this happen. And right now it's not happening yet, but we foresee this with blockchain, it's possible to make it happen. Okay, so consolidation to improve service. And also, you know, for small shippers to lower their cost, for carriers to lower the carrier's operation cost. And, uh, and to build some kind of uh, like a connection between shippers and carriers. Okay, so that's, you know, to, for both sides to enjoy economy of scale and lower their operational cost. So that can be done if we have a trust building our blockchain and if we have a smart contract to do it fairly and efficiently. So that's the idea, okay, we call it C. Okay. Another thing is expansion. Expansion, when we say, is because we have permissioned blockchain, here. So if how we communicate with someone outside of the blockchain or for another blockchain, right? So one thing about expansion is to have more actors and members to join it, like what's happening right now with Chitterlands. It's expanding. Okay. There's so many okay, agents, agencies, you know, uh, like shippers and 3PL, 4PL have joined the Chitterlands. And even we have a bank joined the Chitterlands now. Okay. So now we wanted to expand, of course, for inside okay, the blockchain. But also, we wanted to have some way to expand it. Yeah. Now, we call it interoperability with the other blockchains. And this is particularly important if we have like a government on the blockchain. For example, we have our, uh, our military and is operating with a huge uh, supply chain, military supply chain. And sometimes they may, they use like a commercial service, right? But you cannot, you know, the military, they have their own data they have their own you know, blockchain system or supply chain system. They don't want to join children's. Okay? But if we have interoperability, we can share you know, limited but secure data needed okay, across different blockchain. Okay? Among these different blockchains, and make a member in one blockchain easily can do business with another member in another blockchain. So you don't need to join all the other blockchains. You are in this blockchain, but because you have this like a protection and support from this blockchain, and people also trust you as you're in this blockchain, and then you can communicate with the Okay, another business in another blockchain through the interoperability okay, between blockchains, no among blockchains. Okay. And of course, in this area, we need more smart contract to be built. And we also need to build something called internet of blockchains. So that's uh, kind, of, kind of like our vision okay, of uh, this, uh, oh, Ways of keep pace, okay, permission, authorization, consolidation, and expansion in blockchain, uh, okay, implementation, in ocean transportation. Any any questions? Any comments? Good. Any questions out there? Or okay. comments? I I have some comments. Please, thank you. Yes, my name is Brett Carpenter, and um, I, I share the, your vision, um, the vision, and I think a lot of it has to do with um, identification, which is, you know, specifically a Hyperledger um, project with Indy. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you mentioned the military, and I think that. Not a lot of people understand that the military has kind of a um, oversight over the entire globe. 
And so the things of blockchain need to be introduced into the court systems. And that's what our group is essentially focused on the militaries of America and Sweden right now. And I think that is essentially a path that has to be addressed with identification first when you're talking mm -hmm. about when you're talking about encryption. Mm -hmm. And so I'll I'll do a hard stop now and thank you so much for your presentation. Really, really good use of time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brad. So that's so that's the uh, the full um, idea. So we call the uh, permission authorization consolidation and expansion ideas in uh, strategy we propose. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about the C uh, consolidation, and we believe consolidation is the key, uh, especially for businesses. Okay, if we do business, why we're using blockchain, right? We have to have business benefit, okay, and the benefit can can be generated, okay? and I think a significant benefit can be generated through consolidation. Okay, and so this is just an example, right? We have uh, like one carrier and multiple shippers, right? And then what happened is, is carriers and uh, shippers. Okay, are connected through smart contract. Okay. Then in this smart contract, okay, so you, if we have like a carrier, okay, and uh, the shippers, right, they're going to the same direction, okay, they will be able to communicate, okay, with the carrier and also putting their shipment together, okay, see. I and J shippers, okay? And each of us, we only have a half a container, but okay, two of us together, two shippers together, we have one container, okay? Then one container, okay, we can have a business with this carrier, okay? And uh, start to ship things out, right? Okay, so, this, so that's the idea. That's the idea, so for the shippers to have, to generate power, Okay, by working together, okay, consolidate uh, their um, their shipment. Okay. So, yeah, quick, quick question uh, that from the audience here from Ben. Let's see, what was it? Is the end goal to build chain code based apps that support trade lens or complete compete with trade lens? Okay. So I think people, there's a, there's a competition happen. Even Oracle has the smart cargo thing, right? And also in uh, like children is a focus on ocean transportation. And also there's a uh, okay, company working on trucking industry and all that. Uh, um, definitely if the blockchain is not, a, you know, if your blockchain system is not continually innovated then you will see okay, the competitions happening and uh, this pushing things forward. I think it's a good thing. But I, I like the, the, what he mentioned. So I, I guess I'm a little unclear then. It is you, you're, talk, you're saying that this is an addition to trade lens or is that no. others out, out there? Just so, I, just so I'm clear. Yeah, this is what I. This is what we propose. It's not what Traderlands is doing now. Okay. Yeah. So we actually uh, check the word Traderlands. Traderlands is right now they have some very simplified uh, contract. Uh, we don't even think of them as a smart contract. It's just a okay. standard shipping contract. Yeah. And then the shippers and carriers can choose and decide. They have several formats. Then you choose one. Okay. Right. <clears throat> but um, in our opinion, we don't think that as a smart contract yet. Got it. So you're th so right now, this is an idea, I guess, yeah. to Ben's question. And then how this idea gets picked up has multiple possibilities, whether Trade Lens does it or somebody, somebody out there takes this idea and actually instantiates it, or you guys do it. I think... Uh, well, likely someone or traders do it. Okay. Uh, we are okay. working on 
we are also working on the smart contract simulator. Um, my team is uh, working on that. Good. Good. And I know that was something that I was very interested in, so I'll let you get to that point. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, so, but, but it's ongoing. I mean, I can see a lot of other research teams that have a okay, strong research power who can you know, dig through this quicker. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But 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 it doesn't hurt to share. This is our idea. Uh, this is what we wanted to do. Uh, is to to have some contract that uh, a smart contract that actually people can you know join. Okay. Based on you know uh, the information like what kind of cargoes you want to ship, what kind of things you want to ship, right? How much space you need, and uh, because you don't want to consolidate different things, right? Some things are not, sometimes, uh, what is your time limit? Yeah. So later on, I'm going to talk about, like, uh, there's uh, two ways, event trigger or time trigger, <laughs> okay, to to do the consolidation. Um, but that's, uh, again, this, uh, the ideas uh, uh, from our research team um, hasn't been implemented yet. Yeah. Hopefully, if any, any other research team are interested to implement that, that would be good, yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's the uh, um, consolidation. I we believe uh, consolidation is the key. And I also wanted to since uh, Tom mentioned, like, is this happening or not? Right? It's not happening yet. The smart contract is not happening yet. Okay. It's a proposal. Okay. <laughs> uh, so so far, this is some of the. Since uh, applications, we realize that's happening, but again, we have very limited knowledge on blockchain. Uh, and uh, this thing is uh, blockchain technology is constantly changing okay, and uh, improving. So, um, so I'm open to hear uh, others' um, ideas and comments. Okay. So right now, like uh, uh, for permission to blockchain, right? Uh, we, we know there's uh, a few of them. Okay, um, working on different areas. We mentioned uh, Oracle is uh, working on the Cargo Smart blockchain, and it could be a big competitor of uh, children's. It's also permissioned uh, blockchain. And uh, in terms of authorization, uh, we see uh, Maersk and IBM for children's. They are the owners, so they do have in children's. They have this authorization. Uh, but they have a lot other large carriers act as trust anchors or uh, uh, validators. In our opinion, they are like certifiers in our design, our strategy. Uh, and they have an advisory board is built okay, with the major player carriers. Um, but um, in our opinion, we are thinking um, this authorization part can be further improved. <laughs> no, okay, we think it's improved yeah. by allow small shippers and shippers and 3PLs and agent, okay, government agent, okay, customs, okay, to join in into the advisory board, okay, based on um, their credit in the blockchain. Okay. So somehow we wanted to promote a credit system like. Now you go to Uber, right? <laughs> your, 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 your driver, you have a you know, customer review, <laughs> you have a rating there. And if you're a passenger, you also have a rating, right? Okay. So we wanted to, based on the transactions in the uh, blockchain system, we wanted to build a credit system or kind of like a, you keep a record of the performance of the actors in the blockchain. And based on that, we can promote or allow some of the actors to become certifier or you know, even allow them into our parliament. Okay. So, so that's the current situation and our uh, idea. And also the current situation, we don't think the smart contract is smart enough yet. We think what happened in Chitterlands are just very simplified uh, smart contract, simplified contract. It's not a smart contract. Okay. And uh, in terms of interoperation effort, we do say uh, like uh, a lot of researches and projects okay, 
uh, working in this area. Uh, there's a, a polka dot, a block net, uh, in online, Wan Chen, okay, Cosmic. Okay. Uh, so there's uh, different ideas. Oops. People are uh, try to uh, um, okay. I would say uh, do the interoper interoperation in among blockchains. Uh, and we we are seeing uh, we are, we have seen this uh, uh, are happening, but it's still I think uh, at this moment in a experimental stage. Okay. Definitely need a lot of development in interoperability area. Okay, so we wanted to say so we promote uh, we propose our PACE pace strategy, and uh, we wanted to talk about or we also wanted to say how can we implement this strategy in blockchain right in ocean transportation. Right? Uh, so just to start. In ocean transportation, is the good thing is, okay, traditionally, we already have a lot of, quite some shipper associations and the carrier islands already built up okay, in different areas. Okay. Uh, and uh, these shipper associations, sometimes by location, some kind of, sometimes by you know, what kind of uh, you know, items they are shipping. Okay. So, can act as a starting point because companies in these associations already have some kind of reputation built up and there's trust built up in these associations. So this association can be, you know, I think the starting point or initiation point for ocean transportation blockchain, okay, for the shippers to join. Okay? And also, uh, okay, military and government, they're building their blockchain. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> we know uh, military uh, has huge supply chain there. Um, definitely, um, this is an area okay, okay, requires a lot of research support. Okay? Um, and also based on the where uh, geographic areas and Okay, we can have blockchain in like in California, can shippers can build a blockchain. Okay. Or like uh, companies in, in or shippers in uh, Eastern Coast. Okay. Well, if you are using let's say uh, Boston Harbor, okay. <laughs> and all of us we have already have a shipper association, but maybe we can build a blockchain. Okay. Um, and based on the functional group of three PL. Okay, for PL, they wanted to consolidate it. Well, yeah. Amy, what's the what's the initial reaction you're getting from some of these groups you're talking to? Are they saying, yep, you're you're on the right path here? It sounds like Trade Lens agrees, yes, you're on the right path, which is good. What about some of these other groups? Are they saying, yep, you're on a good path, or we still gotta we gotta investigate more? Yeah, this we have to ask one well, of my co author, uh, Professor, Professor Bob Lieb, okay, has been working in the ocean transportation for many, many years. The associate, shipper associations and the carrier alliances, um, the, the, there's a, quite some dynamics there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. We think there's a possibility. Okay. Um, yeah. If they can. You know, use what they already have. Uh, you know, adopt the blockchain technology and uh, make the whole system to be much more, uh, even more efficient. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, so another thing is we talk want to talk about in terms of uh, implementation. Um, I just want to make sure I don't take too much time okay, for my talk. Okay. So it's a smart contract design. We wanted to uh, mention like there's a volume trigger smart contract and a uh, uh, time trigger smart contract design. Okay. So for example, it can be volume trigger. Like I'm a carrier. Now um, I have a, a okay, vessel which you know, I filled it 80%, but I still have 20% of the space. We can 
and I'm open for the other shippers okay, to use. Um, so there's unfilled volume. Before I you know, um, sail uh, across the Pacific Ocean, if I can sell this um, like a volume, that would be good, right? So then what happened is this is a certain amount of space left from one, one vessel. And then the shippers, okay, they can reach a deal. Given this is a limited space, right, there's a space, then the shippers can come in, join this smart contract. Say, this is how much I want, how much I want. Once you reach to certain volume, then the deal is done. So we have multiple shippers can come into this, uh, this smart contract just by signing in, right? Until it reaches to certain volume. Okay. And once we reach this volume, we can get a good deal. Because, you know, with like say a hundred containers, okay, we'll get a much lower price from Maersk because we're shipping a hundred containers together. Okay. So so that's what we consider a smart contract based on the volume trigger. We got this volume. Okay, if we reach this volume, we can get a good deal. Okay, so the shippers just can join in the smart contract. Another thing is we say time trigger. We have the certain unfilled vessel capacity, but it's you know as a carrier, Maersk. Okay, I'm okay. The 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 cargo need to leave the harbor like in one week. I only have one week of time. Okay, so whoever come in first. Who we'll get it? Okay, yeah. So if you you catch that catch uh, you you catch that time, you get a good deal. Okay. Yeah. So that's a time trigger smart contract. So so I think either way we can build a smart contract. Okay, based on the volume to get a you know to reach to certain scale. So in order to get a discount, or you know based on the time. Okay, because you know, if I'm a, sh a huge vessel, I only have some unfilled volume left. When it's time, like next Wednesday, I have to leave the harbor. I have to leave. Okay, so whoever has the last minute, like this one week, you have the cargo, you're ready. I can ship for you with a lower cost because otherwise, I, that space is wasted, right? Yeah. Why does this have to be a a, a blockchain smart contract? I mean, you're basically creating an application that supplants the role of consolidators today, and that's fine. You're getting rid of an intermediary with an application, but I don't see why it needs to be on a blockchain. Yeah, that's the something we wanted to do it a long time ago in ocean transportation. It's just so difficult to do it because it's, if you're a shipper, it's just difficult for you to you know, trust the other shippers, okay? You have to have a certain kind of trust in order to consolidate. And and you have to do it quickly. So the, the advantage of doing this on a blockchain is that all the parties can be anonymous. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to know. No such that. time as the uh, contract actually. Yeah, and you still trust yeah. them. Yeah, and you, can, you don't need to share too much information about yourself, but you can. Right. Okay. Yeah, get the discount. And the smart contract and through the blockchain can do it and do it efficiently. Instead of negotiating in the association and takes like days to and a lot of documents. This is just designed in the smart contract in the blockchain. And you meet the requirement, you get it. So it's I think it's especially especially good for small shippers because otherwise small shippers are usually <coughs> ignored by the big carriers because their business is too small. Well, it's, it, it's, it would be used by anyone who currently uses a consolidator because they're too small to go direct to the shippers. Yeah, and you, but you're the thing is disintermediating the consolidators. Yeah, the consolidation in current situation is just not efficient. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So with the blockchain, we uh, we hope when the, with the smart contract designed it, we we hope it will be much more efficient and also 
is more secure and uh, and, and saving the cost. So, so that's the idea. Okay. So then in terms of the actor evaluation, we wanted to build up this blockchain ID and credit and record keeping. And these are also needed to connect with the Internet of Things. We need to have a rating and authorization systems to be built up uh, to implement this uh, system. And another thing to look at that implementing uh, blockchains, a lot of companies are hesitating because they don't know the benefit. So the, it's a good idea to start with a simulator to find out how big a benefit I can have if I use this, uh, or join the blockchain, if I use the blockchain. Okay? And there's uh, some of the uh, simulators are available right now. Okay? I wanted to mention Talaria, because Talaria is uh, a simulator designed by my team. <laughs> so we actually, uh, and this is the collaborative work of big, uh, with uh, um, this is DAPR funded research project. Okay? Uh, we just uh, uh, accomplished, okay? um, and this is a collaborative work uh, with uh, Ray Sun and Duke University and William Mary. Okay? So we build a, a smart a blockchain simulator called Talaria, and Talaria is good. Okay, specifically good because it can uh, incorporate a huge volume of transactions. Uh, it's, the scale can be huge. And also we have built in a majority and it's easy to incorporate okay, with different kinds of supply chain models. And uh, um, of course we ensure there's a scalability without a very costly computation. And we also had some uh, theoretical result to prove um, that it actually uh, uh, guarantees a strong consistency okay, with a certain kind of uh, protocols. Okay. So um, this is something okay, we published. Okay. Um, this is a public resource simulator. So it's free <laughs> okay, for all businesses. Okay. We put it out there. Okay, this is the link okay, uh, with all the code. Uh, and uh, okay. the, um, it enables a wide range of feasibility analysis. Okay. And it's, very it's fast. specifically targeted at, 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 at uh, ocean freight. No, no. This is for all sorts of supply chains. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, another work, <laughs> another project we work, but it's definitely some uh, simulator people can use okay, in ocean transportation as well, okay, and in other industries too. Yeah. Um, the thing about this Talaria is we designed this, um, it can incorporate big supply chain. Okay. So, uh, uh, like, because the, the simulator, okay, the supply chain, we take in the information is actually a military supply chain. It has it's huge with like thousands of transactions per second. Okay. So the way we uh, the Talaria this uh, simulator can the, in terms of computation is very efficient. Yeah. So that's the difference of this simulator compared to other simulators. Okay. It's, uh, our opinion, we think it's a okay, um, very efficient simulator and uh, can be adapted to uh, many different uh, industries, and different type of supply chains, and it also incorporate uh, various uh, protocol, consensus protocol. So that- Can, can uh -huh. I ask a couple questions there? Yes, please. So, so uh, what, what kind of supply chain models do you have in there? Is it more actor-based where you know, I can rearrange the different actors that are out there, whether I'm a consolidator, some 3PL, some 4PL, some freight forwarder, et cetera? So you, 
So you're asking, uh, let me ask you the question, uh, clarify your question is about our simulator or? Correct, correct, on the simulator. I'm just trying to get a handle on. Oh, oh yeah, what, the I, simulator. I, I've always been on the, the search for modeling tools for blockchain um, and blockchain-based applications as well as a network. And it, it's, been a, it's been a continuing search here. So I always like models and simulators. So. You know, what level are we operating here? Can I give it to a business analyst and they can do some analysis here? Or yeah, we are. Program? Yeah, we are actually uh, working on to build on more interfaces on this uh, blockchain. Build what? Sorry. Interface. So business can use the interface to connect with this simulator. Okay. Right now, this simulator it just simulates the uh, your supply chain. You, whatever you have inside, okay, whatever you have in your supply chain, it simulate it. Okay, right. Yeah, so you just make it, you know, put it into okay, blocks, okay, and get, save it and all that. Uh, um, but if we add on better interface, okay, then we can have uh, like a business to put it okay. in, yeah. Yeah, if I'm ocean transportation, I have my interface to connect with Talaria. Yeah. So, so, so next stages is uh, that's our next stage work. Okay, got it. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would assume that since you're a professor of business analytics, that you'd want to get there. <laughs> I, we wanted to do more work on this in this area, uh, but oh, in the other. Uh, you know, on the other side, you know, we have a limited resource here. We're just uh, okay. <laughs> as research team in, in a university, right? Okay. And so a lot of folks out there okay, with more research power, okay. Well, so we're open to share our ideas so for other people to explore. And yeah, yeah the key is we dig in and uh, make the blockchain, you know, in this technology to be more advanced for all industries and Good. so for Good. our society yeah yeah so or darpa or darpa can give you more money right hopefully okay <laughs> tax dollars at work <laughs> hopefully yeah yeah but we we are so glad to receive that grant so we were able to get some work done good good yeah. Okay, any other questions out there from folks? Uh, yep, new questions. The same statement again, Brett Carpenter. I think on the whiteboard, there needs to be some sort of Roman numeral about legal framework and the, and the courts, the world courts, the military courts, all of these things for the actual adoption. But what you're saying is extremely promising that you have a simulator. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this simulator, thank you so much. It's right now, it's just open source and uh, it's just a blockchain simulator. Yeah, I see in your comments. Yeah, well, well, the good thing about the DAPA funded research is DAPA does not claim any of this as intellectual uh, property. It's just, uh, you know, serve for everyone, serve for our society, the, the research. Okay, and that's the reason we posted like a online and public resource open to everyone, all the resource, uh, open to everyone who wanted to use it. Yeah, we're interested to adopt it. Yeah. So it's a free um, simulator to uh, everyone. Yeah. Any other questions out there? Hi, this is Alicia. I mean, thank you so much for sharing this. I really appreciate you sh sharing your research. You've done a tremendous amount of work on this. It was really good to see your stressing the importance of interoperability. I, I know Brett and I think also Tom know that I've done some work with Origin Trail and they've actually started a working group specifically focused on interoperability. I'm not sure if you've um, if you've done any work with them. They have done a lot of work with GS1 and BSI as well as companies around the world. And for the working group now, um, it's not just companies, but also researchers from McGill, from top universities around the world. I'm going to stick the announcement in the chat because I think it's something that you, uh, 
if you're not aware of it already, you might be interested in it. So let me stick that in now. Good. Thanks, Alicia. You're welcome. Thank you. It sounds like, Amy, you're, you're as well as presenting to us and sharing some of your thoughts, you're looking for additional input here going forward on how yes, to take yes. this research. And I, we're all uh, very interested in blockchain. We've been in the space for a while and we, we like sharing our thoughts and helping to, I mean, we're part of this special interest group because we want to help this ecosystem grow and- Yeah, exactly. Uh, more <laughs> out there. So, uh, so, yeah. so thank you for uh, sharing this today. I appreciate it. Others, that have you, as you've heard there, also appreciate thank it. And I suspect the Same. people who listen to the recording will also appreciate this. And I'll please pass along our thanks to your uh, collaborators on the uh, article there. So with that, I'm going to close this out here. A couple things. Uh, we're going to have a LinkedIn supply chain special interest group uh, page here. Daniela is helping us to uh, get that set up. So look for something uh, on the wiki. I'll be sending out an email on that with that link here shortly. Um, our next session on May 13th is going to be a working session. So if you remember our last session was a working session and we decided we'd do a couple small projects with the emphasis on small. Uh, so Eric Villaquette has agreed to head up the use case uh, small project and Yari Barbone over in Italy has agreed to head up the RFI RFP and Brett you've agreed to help out I think Eric right? on that. So we're still looking for additional help on that. Right. I have a couple of email chains going. So the next call will be a working call. Please come ready to roll up your sleeves, all those kind of good words on May 13th, if you join us. And then lastly, global forums come in uh, in a virtual form in uh, June. So a little over one month away. And I was talking with Danielle yesterday and it sounds like there's lots of supply chain. And one thing they're going to do is they're going to give us a supply chain, uh, kind of roadmap. Here's all the supply chain sessions uh, that are at Global Forum. So with that, Amy again, thank you very much. Folks, thanks for joining here today and look forward to seeing you on a future call here as well as on the wiki here with all sorts of interaction. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank bye you bye. everyone. Yeah. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Take care.